any form of asymmetric warfare produces uh, fear among the civilian population because um, asymmetric warfare is a, is a struggle between a, a high-tech army and a low-tech insurgent force and the insurgents hide among civilians in order to make things harder for the high-tech army. And if, you, if the insurgents are hiding among civilians, they are putting civilians at risk and civilians will be terrified. Uh, but who is responsible for terrifying them? Where does the moral responsibility lie? Does it lie among the insurgents hiding using civilian cover, or does it lie with the army attacking insurgents who are using civilian cover? Um, in fact, if, if the army doesn't attack with great care, uh, this, is, this is in fact the real question. It's, it's um, that, that is crucial to, to um, all forms of deterrent warfare and is being debated now in the US Army. What risks do soldiers have to take to reduce the risks they impose on civilians? That's, a, that's a, not an easy question, and it's a question that has to be decided on the ground by junior officers who control the, the tactics of the, of, the, of the struggle. What risks do they ask their soldiers to take? Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know how to quantify that. I can't. It's not quantifiable. It's a, you, you want, you want uh, junior officers with the moral sensitivity to make those kinds of decisions on the, on the spot. Um, I, I can give you a standard example, which comes, um, which is one of the, the, which is a typical incident in Afghanistan, which prompted the um, the new rules of engagement that General McChrystal uh, issued, and which many soldiers resented. Um, American troops take fire from the roof, from Taliban fighters on the roof of a small apartment building in an Afghan town. Um, they don't know who's in the apartment building. Uh, they don't know if, the, if, if there are people there. They don't know if they are there because the Taliban has threatened to shoot them if they leave or because they are sympathetic to the Taliban or simply because they are scared. Um, so what, 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 should, what, what should we do? It's, an, it's a decision of the American officer on the ground. And I was told that in the old days, before McChrystal's rules, it was quite common just to pull the soldiers back and call in an airstrike on the building. And if there were people in the building, they got killed, and you got the militants on the roof, presumably, and, and the others were collateral damage. The new rules of engagement say you can't do that. You can't call in an airstrike if you don't know who's in the building. So what do you do? Well, you can try to get soldiers on the roof of an adjacent building so that they can shoot directly at the Taliban. You can have a real firefight, but that puts the soldiers at risk, a risk that they wouldn't have at all if you called in an airstrike. Or you can send soldiers into the building to f find out who's there. Um, and that also puts the soldiers at risk. Uh, or you can just pull back and say, well, we'll get the guys on the roof another time. We'll, have a, we'll fight with them another time. This isn't a good time because civilians are at risk, and you just withdraw. You leave the field to the enemy, which American soldiers are not supposed to do. But that is, according to McChrystal's rules, that's sometimes what you should do. And that's the... That, that's, that's the real issue. Now, you assume the civilians in the building are terrified. But who's terrifying them? Who's responsible for their, for their fear? And how do you fight in a way that minimizes the, 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 the danger, the physical danger to their lives? How do you fight in a way that minimizes that? 
and what kind of risks can you ask your soldiers to take in order to do that? Those, are, those, are the, those questions are actually being debated inside the army right, right now, and they are the toughest. They are the toughest questions. 